Hey, what's going on, guys? It is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics, and this is the three up, three down. That's right. We're highlighting the three hot and three cold comic book market trends in the community. But before we get into the list this week, we do want to say that we just had episode three of the Superman's Comics and Friends podcast. Great new episode. We had special guests Drew from the YouTube channel Drew Manchu and JB from the YouTube channel Discovery Bay Comics. Both of them are also part of the Comic Core. Fantastic show fantastic topics wouldn't you say jack oh absolutely yeah it was fun to talk about with them not just about the comics market but also specifically about the youtube comic community and uh you know what it's like to be a creator and all that goes into it yeah so that's up on the channel right now or that's the flagship audio podcast for this channel so you can check that out on itunes google play wherever your audio podcasts are found but with that being said we're getting right into the three up portion this week starting with back issues i see back issues kind of being hot right now especially with the news that came out this week diamond's going to be stopping shipping so what are people going to levitate towards probably more back issues or at least some back stock then you also have comic book stores that are being closed down they're doing everything they can everything they can to try to survive yeah. um, innovate get the books into people's hands but either way i do see people going to ebay online comic book stores wherever people might still be to get some back issues right now, huh, Jack? Right. Now, this is early in the kind of like life cycle of this trend um, because overall, you can also point really to back issues being down because the market's down in general. Um, and when the market's down in general, you have to kind of take that into consideration, right? So like essentially you could point to anything and put it on the downside of this list because it just, the entire market is feeling the economic crunch that we're all feeling um, due to this pandemic. So he, the key is you have to factor in all things being equal. And well, all things being equal, as you say, we know where we're going to be going in, in the coming weeks. This is the final week of new comic book day for the, at least the foreseeable future with the diamond shutdown and publishers not being able to get books in the hands of retailers and retailers not being able to get those books in the hands of customers. So this is going to become an entire badly back issue driven market. Uh, I still don't believe that people are going to not buy comic books. Uh, it's, it's, this hobby is a relief for so many people. And, um, it's just in, there's a lot of, as you mentioned, Brian, businesses that uh, thrive and survive on the sales of comic books. So it, the whole market is going to get shifted to a back issue market. Um, and what that's going to end up doing really is causing maybe not record sales on individual books, but I think we're going to see a multitude of back issue sales as people pivot from taking their monthly budget, which is already going to be hurting from all of the life circumstances that are going on right now. Um, but they're going to take that budget and whatever comic budget they have, they're going to divert to picking up whatever back issues they were missing for their collection, or maybe investing in key books that they see is down right now due to the market uh, for the future. And that's going to be the only option. So we're going to start seeing some, some back issues become available that we haven't seen. Uh, previously so the entire back issue market right now is going to be very active yeah so no doubt back issues are hot right now but we're also going to pivot some of our content towards back issues right well yeah this this whole diamond shutdown is going to affect every aspect of the market and while us in the youtube comic community we are nowhere near as essential as the lcs is and the creators themselves it absolutely has impacted us because without new comic book day, there really isn't a Bolo show. Um, but we refuse to let that be. So we are going to pivot the Bolo show and the Bolo list is still going to exist, but it's going to be back issue oriented. Still working out some details about how we kind of want to structure that um, and how that this show will ultimately be, but you're still going to get your Bolo show every Thursday night, 9 PM on um, the Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel. You're still going to get your bolo list on Wednesday because we're going to keep that Wednesday tradition rolling no matter what's going on. Yeah. It's going to be the buy bolo, the back issue bolo. Yeah. But pivoting on to the next portion of the three up, we're talking about those multiple copy lots. What's going on with this, Jack? Why is this hot? Well, we're seeing it happen more and more right now. And I think it's specifically driven 
towards say multiple copies of the same book, but you're also seeing it with say runs or sets or things. People are looking to offload stuff right now. People need money. And um, I talked on the podcast um, that you talked about in the beginning of the show. I talked about the fact that what's the first thing you do? You kind of go to that $300 and $400 book in your collection. Well, A, some people don't have those books. Or and B, once you sell those, what's the next thing you can kind of do? And rather than sell, say, one $25 book, you're seeing people take five of them and put them together. But overall, because the market's depressed, it's creating a buying opportunity. And you know what, Brian? It's pretty rare when we talk about the up portion of this list to say that there's a buying opportunity, but there really and truly is. Um, if you want to sell the books fast, lotting them up is attractive. It gets them sold. Uh, because somebody who say looking to buy a run of Thor, God of Thunder, you know, they're more apt to try to buy your lot of several issues together. Somebody who's investing in a specific character, they're more likely to be attracted to your listing of say five copies of the first better aid bill rather than one. But with where the market is right now, if you do see one of these listings, I saw a listing that was like five copies of Moon Knight number one from 1980 for $100 and they were high grade. And I looked at that and said, wow, you know, that's, that was what two would have cost you just a few months ago. So, you know, there's opportunity out there on both sides. Yeah, I don't sell a lot of comics now, but five, six years ago, I was heavy into the Wednesday Warrior flipping. And that was kind of my MO. I pre-ordered, I didn't go hoo crazy like some of these people do with their copies. But say I'll say Outcast, for example, when that came out, everyone knew it was already optioned. Everyone knew it and was kind of expecting it. So I pre-ordered 10 copies. And then I sold five right off the bat for what I paid for the 10. And then just kind of trickled out the other five. I sent one to CGC and sold that at nine, eight. But that was usually my MO is whatever I pre-ordered it. No more, I never pre-ordered more than 10 copies, but I'd usually sell multiple copies for what I paid in. And then the rest was left over either for PC or straight profit if I was able to sell. But the last one for the three up is definitely probably one of the hottest news right now, even though maybe production might be halted. But yeah. even with that casting news, this character has been heating up specifically since Mandalorian came out and season seven of Clone Wars, right? And we're talking about Ahsoka, right? From Star Wars. Yeah. So I am really late to the whole Clone Wars party. And it was always something where I was like, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. Well, it got here before I did. And the reality is it's the cool thing about the expansion of the Star Wars universe. And I love Star Wars, but I'm maybe not like as fanatical as other people in a positive way in the fact that like, I tend to like most everything. Um, you know, I don't tend to get at Brian, you and I have talked about this. I like the, the solo movie. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't tend to get as worked up about things. So I'm really excited about the expansion of the, the star Wars universe and getting to go to these different times in the timeline and these different, um, you know, get these different characters to be the, the focal point of the story. And this is a character where we knew, you know, there was already a fan base built in from the, sh the cartoon show, from the fact that the comics were popular. And now we've got a casting, we've got Rosario Dawson, who's a really popular actress. And not only is she popular, she's popular within the, I'll say nerd community. I mean that with all love and respect. Um, she's already been in Daredevil and in and, and Luke Cage and Jessica Jones. And so she she's somebody that we're all familiar with. She was even in that the series like Defenders when she really had no business being in there. Right. And she so this is a home can really home run casting. Um and this this excited the comic market. So this was so this was already popular spec, right, Brian? So this was already a book that was heating up but it has yeah, gone especially that uh limited to a thousand variant i mean that was already way up there right but this book has gone so nuclear 
that that variant that you're talking about that like uh i think it's like the dark horse i think it was the anniversary yeah, the 10th totally anniversary one, one, and one uh, there's a thousand of them printed right so that is actually a good buy right now shout out to cover price cover price put up an instagram post today highlighting the fact that it's actually a decent buy because raw it's selling for about three hundred dollars but the regular book has ascended to about three hundred dollars so the price is now so comparable between the regular book and the variant people should be paying attention to how rare that variant is and how 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 fewer of those exist than that regular cover i think brian and it's an example and we've talked about it on the channel before about the fact that when major media picks up on things they show that cover that cover that cover a the one that everybody's familiar with so whenever anyone's reading an article and they it relates to the comic whether or not it's uh you know whether it's it's even a comic book related media they don't tend to highlight the variant and i think that that's why the trend has gone in that direction yeah one thing i also like about the clone wars cartoon is it's really really good and it takes place during the part of like the really, really bad movies. I couldn't say it's one, two, and three. But either way, if you haven't watched Clone Wars, the cartoon, definitely check it out. It's well worth watching. With that being said, there's our three up portion. Again, let us know in the comments. What do you think of the up portion? What do you think is hot right now? But with that being said, we're also going to go right into that three down portion, starting with facsimile fraud. Fraud's bad. <laughs> but what we're getting at is a lot of times you'll see on eBay or listings where people list the facsimile edition and they don't necessarily like say it's the original, but they don't say it's facsimile either. Right, Jack? Right. And moderating a very large Facebook comic group like Brian and I used to have to try to do. Um, we saw this post on almost a daily basis of somebody being like, look at this auction scammer and it'd be an ebay listing and, and yeah it'd be typically new mutants 98 i'd say that is the most egregious offender and i can't exactly put my finger on why that is because it has a big 399 on the facsimile um i just think it's that when you're looking at a a say incredible hulk 181 there's just such a paper difference between that and what those facsimiles look like. And I think that maybe the New Mutants being more modern. I also think that Deadpool has more crossover appeal. So what I mean by that is non-comic book collectors who don't really know the market who or it like could just Deadpool. Be a super duper impulse buyer where they just see the cover for a price that is a little bit cheaper than the normal one and things. But see that. that I don't buy into. I just can't imagine that people are thinking that these oh here's the first Deadpool for a hundred bucks. Um and that and that's what everyone wants to try to make that out to be. And I that I almost don't I just I find that less likely than it is somebody who maybe just doesn't know comics because I'm not going to find an, an Incredible Hulk 181 on eBay for 200 bucks for any reason. Um, so I, if I saw one, even if I would have to not know much, I'd have to be new. Um, but people were getting away with this. It's difficult because these sellers, they find these creative ways to list these. They list them definitely leading you to believe this is real. It's not like they go out of the, they don't have the yeah, word facsimile. First, first Deadpool. Yeah, they don't say facsimile. They don't say, a, um, you know, I don't have a problem with somebody saying the first appearance of Deadpool, but they need to say facsimile or reprint or both. Um, these books have value, and this is where it really bothers me is, aside from the misleading, which is terrible, misleading somebody, getting somebody's money, um, that you you haven't earned and they that you know sticking somebody with a less valuable collectible is terrible but what what really sucks is that these facsimiles are great collectibles in and of themselves and you're really selling them short by turning them into something that you can try to manipulate people with because you know that's not what they're intended for and the, you there's an entire market that has shown we've had these books on the hot on the up portion um of this list before because the market has said and shown that they have interest in the, in these books. We've seen, you know, consistently them show up on whether it's the Bolo list or whatever, and they've become 10, $15 books. So, you know, this, this 
to do this kind of stuff, it, it, it's bad for the market. Luckily, we're seeing it slow down. We're seeing people get hip to it. We're seeing people know that these books ex exist, and we're seeing far fewer of those high-end yeah. um, auctions. And yeah, and if you're looking at a listing, make sure you click over to the picture where it blows up onto that big square. Scroll up to where you can see the price and real good for you. Yeah. Let's know that it's a facsimile edition. Next one we're talking about on the three down, though, is Indie Comics. Indie Comics, there's some outliers, of course. There's always some outliers of what, what we're talking about. But as a whole, we're starting to see Indie Comics. They're kind of down right now, I think, especially with um, – the current situation that's going around they have less resources available to them but we're also seeing i think as a whole that in the community come together to do the best they can to make sure they're getting books in people's hands but no doubt right now we're seeing any comics on a downward trend yeah you know, you're right about the efforts that the independent publishers are making and they're doing more than anything we haven't even heard from marvel or dc um and i think that's that's something that i feel like is a major problem but that's a whole separate issue where this trend speaks to specifically, Brian, is actually on those popular books. And this is a trend I think we're going to see throughout this, this whole um, difference of lifestyle. You and I talked kind of right before we got on the air about the sports card market. And we were talking about the fact that major rookie cards are down in some areas up to 40% because the sports card market is so tied to – what are you doing on the field today? So the fact that there is no sports, the entire like singles rookie market is starting to see a hit. And I think independent comics is very similar to that when you start to talk about secondary market pricing. And if you follow that analogy, it, what it really relates to is what we talk about is the cycle of independent comics. You know, a book comes out, it's popular. Number one issue sell really high. And then it goes through this long period where because people have moved on to the next hot indie, it's not being talked about and not until optioning or, and then development into whatever it's going to be. Movie TV, that's the market today. Well, no movies or TV shows are being you know produced right now. Even if something's optioned, it's not going to get any sort of a green light. There's not going to be new comics produced at this point because of what's going on with um with diamonds so the existing number ones what whatever your favorite book are your, your your pick for the next book to get optioned or those existing options and there's so many existing options books that have been picked up who were previously um extremely popular who are gonna feel this um you know you think about different things like umbrella academy if they're finished with the season great the show can go and get on netflix and they can be good to go if they weren't finished with the season uh, you know this delay they're not going to be able to shoot till all this is done that issue number one is going to continue to drop in value and you're going to see that across the board but where you're also going to see that is on issues that are more recent so a book like reaver where their number one issue became $10, $12, $15, and then started to come down, right? Because that's what happens. Now there is no reason for that book to sustain any buzz. There's no reason for that book to be, to be talked about. And books like that are going to be back to cover price books because they're going to get put up on eBay and they're not going to have any sort of a demand. So there now is a great – and as we always talk about with this portion of the list, now is a great buying opportunity for independent comics. Your favorite number ones from Image, from Boom, from those even smaller press, um, your favorite speculation picks for what you think would make a great movie or a TV show, now is an excellent time to buy those books. I agree with buying them with when they're low, but... I hope people would buy them also to actually read a good story because if you're buying it, hoping that something's going to be option or something's going to get made. Problem I have with that right now is, yeah, everything's at a pause, but when it turns back up again, everything gets optioned. I think it's now where the bucket of stuff that's optioned has grown so substantially that it's not to me anyways, it doesn't have the buzz that it used to have when you saw something, Oh, they were going to make a movie about this. Well, now, 
all these studios have like caught on to that. So they're all grabbing up all these properties just because option also doesn't going to be made. It's just that they bought the rights to if they want to make it. Yeah, but if you're a reseller, it's all about having that window. So a book like The Unsound that got optioned by Netflix from Boom Studios. Yes, that book has dropped off now. You're right. And it may ne- maybe it never becomes a Netflix show. But if you already had that book and you were prepared when that book got optioned, you were able to sell that book for $30. And you made great money if you bought that book, like I'm talking about with these books, at cover price. Yeah. October Faction got option two and made and it sucked assholes <laughs> but <laughs> but it, you had to wait too long if you sold october faction when you know it was a key collector alert and everybody was running to buy it you made great money on october faction it's all about when you bought it in this cycle so that's what we're saying buy low and sell high yeah i don't play that game anymore i moved on to stratego <laughs> But I get I get what you're saying, um, and it's going to tie into the next one on the three on the three down. And we're talking about movie spec. No movies are in production right now. They've pushed everything back. What we just saw, Wonder Woman eighty four, got pushed back to what August now, I believe it. Or I know it's gotten pushed back to late summer. But either way, movie spec. There's not much movie spec news because there's not much movie production going on. But why else is this down, Jack? Well, yeah, I mean, that's really the reason. And there's, really no, there's really nothing else. And with the entire industry shut down, it's going to no impact. San Diego Comic-Con right now, right? Yeah, it's not just going to impact the, the movies that were set to come out, like Wonder Woman, Black Widow, New Mutants, movies like that. It's also going to impact those next grouping of movies because they don't want to pack everything on top of each other. They need to have the proper amount of, of time. This is going to impact the movie schedules for probably the next 18 months. Which, so, Hold on. Let me go ahead. take back what I said. I, to be honest, I don't think we've heard any news about San Diego Comic-Con, right? Because that's July. So we don't know if that's still on, postponed or what. So Yeah, we haven't heard of it. We have, well, yeah, we haven't heard official news, but I'm going to be honest with you. Like I know last night on the, the, the podcast, Drew was very – positive that this isn't going to take too long I, I stand at kind of in the other corner i think that we're in this for the long haul i just got notification that my kids are out of school till the end of april at least um this is the second time they've pushed it back so you know i i, I think that we're in, in this for a while and you mentioned you know when we we're talking about options like once this gets turned on everything's going to crank back up. But see, I don't know if things get cranked up too fast because you already had stuff going. It's going to take a minute for us, like to get everyone to get their footing back. Companies have to come back. They've already got, what do we got in production? I think some stuff could fall by the waistline uh, I, because you can only get focused on so much. And when we start talking about these, these current upcoming, uh, you know, the movie specs, whether it's Marvel or DC, Everything being pushed back, you start to look at the stuff, not just the, the Black Widow stuff, but as we talked about that next level of stuff, so Eternals, um, Captain Marvel 2 spec, Black Panther 2 spec, that has now been pushed so far back. It's almost like getting a reset. It's almost like getting to go back in time, right? We get to go back to last year's prices. If you felt like, and, and I mentioned this when we talked about the Eternals on the down portion, if you felt like you missed the Eternals, you have a second life. Uh, you can pick up a first appearance of the Celestials and a first appearance of Cersei in like mid grade in like a six zero to seven zero raw for the price of a first punchline. I mean, it's really incredible. Yeah, so I'm anxious to see how this movie spec works out. I, I, I believe it. It's definitely going to come back and I, I think it's going to come back in full force once you start hearing some news and as people start getting back to their normal routine everything else is going to fall into place and it's just going to be um i'm not going to say like as it was because one thing that i do like about all of this i think there's going to be some things that come out of this adversity that sticks yeah some they're, they're all in techniques some new comic delivery some new i'm i'm there's bound to be because forced innovation. Yes. And there's going to be something that comes out of it. Like, Hey, that worked really well. We're sticking with it for the time right. being. And you're going to see some other great things that come out of it. So there's all, it's, it's a bad time right now for comics is a bad time right now for LCS is a bad time for creators, but 
I think through that adversity, we're going to see some good out of it. And I truly believe that, but either way, that's our three up three down this week. Let us know in the comments. what you guys think about it? Again, let us know. What do you think's hot? What do you think's cold right now? And if you haven't done so, please go over and check out that new podcast episode of Simple Man's Comics and Friends. And tomorrow, for the time being, it will be our last Bolo show as you know it. This is Brian Jack for Simple Man's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.